So yes, I'm going to answer that question. It's pretty simple, actually. Um, nothing that you can, <laughs> um, nothing that you have to do anything special. I usually um, don't suggest to brush dogs' teeth, just because uh, it's something unusual, you know, for dog owners to do something uncomfortable for dogs to go through being brushed and you put you know your hand or your toothbrush in dog's mouth and hope that they're okay and um, you know they they feel comfortable or not uh, usually it's it's something that i don't suggest to do anyways so instead uh, the best thing that you can do is um, to give your St. Bernard uh, a bone, you know, raw bone, uh, you just give them and let them chew on the bone. Um, it's something that it's more natural, it's more uh, um, comfortable for you to give and ask your dog to work on, and it's more natural for dogs to uh, have the bone to chew and work on it. Uh, just get a bone uh, that uh, is bigger than their mouth. So let's say, I would say for a, a St. Bernard, get those thick bones uh, and just probably this size um, and just let them work on it for 20 minutes, 25 minutes, uh, and then you take away. So you just give it, give it to them for 25 minutes and every day or every other day to work for 25 minutes and then just take it away put it in a bag put it back in the fridge and then next day or day two days later just give it back to them and let them work on it the reason i don't suggest you to give more than let them more than um, i would say 20 25 minutes because it becomes a obsession they start working really hard on it and it becomes obsession and then they really get focused and upset with it and uh, get really stressed at it because they, they, they it's very, it's very uh, I would say very fun activity for them to work on bone but um, because their goal is to get uh, to the end of the bone, they really work hard on it, so they get really obsessed with it and really work hard on it. So you don't want to, first of all, let them be obsessed with it and be frustrated, and also you don't want them to overdo uh, the, the, the gums, overwork on the gums and the jaw. Uh, it's a very healthy mental and physical stimulation as well. So. I really highly suggest you to give bones uh, and that will clear up not only the tartars, also the bad breath. It's going to take care of the bad breath as well. Make sure that you're giving a raw bone. You're not, you don't want to cook the bone and give it to them. Uh, even if you're feeding uh, dry food or kibble, give them raw bone. It's safe. It's uh, it's. It's, everything is good and uh, it's it's fine to give them uh, raw bones so just get bones and that will uh, you know last I would say St. Bernard if you give them a good thick bone this size it will last at least four sessions of you know working on it so just let them work on it um, and uh, and then you know, just take it away after 20, 25 minutes, put it in the fridge, bring it back the next day or so. Let them work on it two, three days a week, two, th three times a, a week uh, for 25 minutes. That should be okay. And um, that also, as I said, you know, it's going to take care of the breath, bad breath. Uh, if there is a really um, bad teeth. Uh, or a tooth that has gone bad, that could be the cause of the bad breath too. So you may want to check with the vet to make sure that all the teeth are uh, 
okay. There, there's no gum, gum issue or teeth, tooth issue that there's a problem that you have to take care of maybe. Um, but in general, uh, bones should take care of the bad breath as well. All right, we have Koshi in the house as well. And Koshi is saying, hi, happy to see you too. Uh, thank you for being here. And uh, Koshi, I know she, he is from India. Uh, Lori, where you are from? I uh, just want to know exactly where are the, all the audience from. Uh, it's very exciting to see everybody uh, from all over the world uh, being here. I'm, I'm from Vancouver, Canada, uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. So it's very amazing to see the whole world coming together uh, and talk about dogs. So I'm very happy to have you here with me today. Uh, we're going to talk about dogs, all about dogs. Um, there, um, also, I have some surprises. Uh, we're going to play games as well. Um, and also, we're going to um, also talk about what is the biggest mistake a dog owner makes. Um, and also, you know, as I said, if you have any questions, just uh, let me know and just type it in in the question in chat area and I'll answer them right away. So we got five more minutes to go before everybody comes in. So how are things going? Uh, and Koshi, how is your beagle doing? Uh, I, I, I remember that you were saying that uh, she was uh, driving you crazy. She's a puppy, obviously. That's the, the price you pay. Uh, I enjoy having a puppy, actually. Uh, for me, puppies, they don't, uh, they don't stress me out. For some people, puppies tend to be too much. Uh, for me, it's a joy. I, there is only about six to eight months or somewhere around there, nine months maybe, that you have that opportunity to enjoy a puppy and then they, they become adults and grow up and that's it then no more puppy time and you know I see a lot of puppies uh, at the daycare that we run here and you know the puppies come and they're nice and cute and I enjoy them you know a few months later boom they're big dogs big adult dogs and that puppy attitude and puppy behavior is gone I cherish uh, about puppies. In general, I, I don't get stressed or anxious or I don't drive myself crazy when dogs in general are uh, misbehaving. Uh, the way I look at it when dogs uh, misbehave, I kind of think of it as, oh, there's an opportunity for me to teach or learn something from my puppy or do something about it. Uh, I don't think of it as, uh, hmm, they're trying to piss me off and I get pissed and like that. You know, it's, their, their intentions is not to piss us off. Their, their intentions is not to make us uh, get angry. Um, their intention is just to be a dog, you know, and um, if they're making a mistake, it's something that we have to realize that we either uh, allowed it to happen or we didn't do enough to avoid that mistake from our dogs to uh, occur and happen. And we want to make sure that uh, next time we learn a lesson and we don't allow the puppy or the dog to make that mistake again. So Koshi is saying uh, she's doing great. She's seven months now. Sit, stay down, work great. Leash walk is a pain still. <laughs> yes, uh, I know. The, the leash walk, especially for a beagle, is very challenging. Um, I remember myself when I had the puppies, uh, beagle puppies. You know, Jonah was one, and Harvey the other one. I don't have his picture yet. I should have his picture. Let me get it ready. Yeah. Okay. Let me get there is my Harvey. There's Harvey and Jonah. So when I used to have puppies, and uh, in, in general, I, I didn't think that, you know, I, I remember, I, 
it was a bit challenging for me that that time you know first time beagle owner uh, it becomes a little bit challenging especially beagles they are scent dogs and they just take off and there's this pool and everything is just um, exciting for beagles especially puppies <laughs> it's just uh, uh, it's been for them you know going out and exploring the world is like getting thousands of information at this at every moment that they're out so it's really challenging for them uh, and it will become easier as you as they grow up and they become more mature and uh, they start learning how they're supposed to do um, but in general what i usually suggest is i'm actually uh I've made a video, I'm still editing it. Uh, it's gonna be out uh, running in a week or two. It's about, uh, you know, how to walk a dog uh, uh, pull, who's pulling you on the leash. Uh, it will give you some ideas again. Um, I, there are so many requests about walking uh, dogs on leash that I have to make many videos about that. So I'm gonna make those videos. Um, so I have made one and I'll make some more. So welcome if you are <laughs> new here. My name is Saro. Uh, we are going live. I just started uh, a little bit earlier just to set, set up everything. And if you are uh, live with me, my name is Saro. I'm a dog trainer, also coach dog owners. In this video, I'm going to talk about what is the biggest mistake a dog owner makes. Plus, we're going to play some games. And also, I'm going to answer your dog-related, beagle-related questions. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure to uh, type it in, and I'll answer your questions. We are talking about uh, starting to talk about leash walking, especially leash walking a beagle. Uh, I, I was talking about the fact that it's really hard to teach and train dogs to walk properly on a leash uh, in general. Uh, it takes a long time for them to learn, uh, but uh, I'm making some videos and a video is coming up soon that is gonna give you some ideas what to do and how to uh, control and manage your dog's walk. Uh, Koshi is saying ever since bone biting and fetch started, she also she has learned to get rid of the Pent up energy. Very good. Yes. So that's a that's a good, uh, interesting and good and interesting uh, comment. You know, when you give a bone to a dog, it also stimulates them mentally and physically. So that's a good exercise as well. It's not only you know to clean teeth. It provides mental and physical. You know, the jaw and the neck gets also physically uh, stimulated. Um, it's a good exercise for them, uh, and also it mentally it mentally uh, stimulates them too, so they get nice and uh, tired uh, after 20 minutes or so. And the fetch game also it's a very good game if you play it properly with your dog. The way I suggest you to play fetch is uh, you ask your dog, you teach your dog the sit, stay, and calm. These are the three commands that I highly suggest you to teach. And then uh, when, when you're playing this uh, fetch game, you use these three commands to, um, you know, to use, uh, to um, ask your dog to perform those uh, commands while playing fetch. So for example, you can ask, you can ask your dog to sit and then stay then throw the ball and then your dog is still in stay sit and stay the ball goes stops and then you ask your dog to go and fetch it you say go or whatever release command is okay let the dog go grab the ball and then ask them to come rover come rover comes to you so that's also another command you're teaching and practicing with your dog rover comes to you you ask Robert to sit and stay again, grab the ball. You know, if they are sitting and staying, usually they give, uh, give out the, 
the ball when they're in sit and stay command. And then you take the ball and you throw the ball. You repeat this sit, stay, come. It's they're the best, the best uh, uh, commands to practice uh, the not only these three commands but also play with your dog and also teach your dog uh, that there's a rules and uh, there are some rules when we are playing the fetch game. You go, you grab the ball, you come to me, you sit and stay, and then we continue on the game. So not only you're teaching your dog to sit and stay and follow commands, but also you're practicing um, uh, control, you're practicing um, you know, all the techniques that you've learned, you're practice, uh, learned uh, in the uh, uh, obedience, and you're also teaching your dog, and also you're stimulating your dog mentally and physically. So fetch game is a also a very good game to play with your dog. Fetch game and bones are all, all awesome games to play. Uh, and as Koshi says, her nose is on the floor 24 seven. Yes, that's what happens. When you have a beagle, we call beagles, um, five-legged dogs because their nose is <laughs> always on the ground. They're always sniffing. Uh, it's hard to have a, a dog, a beagle, have her, its nose uh, head, head up uh, so they can't, they want to sniff everything. So in order to help them to ha have their head up, I suggest you to teach the heel command. Heel command is basically the dog is walking right beside you and it's walking and it's walking like this rather than sniffing. So the more you practice a heel command, the better it, you get uh, and the dog gets and also the head gets up. So let's start with a game. Do you know how many teeth puppies have? If you know the answer, type it in. Do you know how many teeth puppies have or do you know how many n teeth a normal dog has if you know the answers type it in let's see if you guys know the answer how many teeth puppies have and how many teeth a normal dog has let's see if you know the answer and I'll answer it in a few minutes but if you know the answers type it in so let's talk about uh, by the way if you have any questions type it in and I'll answer them as well. So before we get also started, uh, I wanted to let you know that uh, this uh, Monday I'm posting a video, actually tomorrow, I'm posting a video uh, about socialization, how to socialize your dog. So make sure to watch that video. Um, not particularly puppies, but in general, how do you socialize a, a dog? So make sure to watch that video. That will help you to understand how to help your dog to be more social and gain more social skills as well. So make sure to watch that video. Um, so next thing that I wanted to talk about is some facts, actually. Did you know that Dalmatian puppies, they are born white? You know, Dalmatian puppies, they're born white and they develop, develop their spots as they grow. Did you know that? So that's a great fact to know, actually. Dalmatian puppies, they don't have spots when they are born. They develop them later on as they grow. That's interesting to know. So let me know if you know the answer to how many teeth puppies have and how many teeth a normal dog has. Can you guess? Can you guess? Let's write the answers if you know the answers. Um, Koshi is saying 40 plus, I guess, uh, seeing the way she chews on the bone. <laughs> so puppies, you guess they have 40 plus. Uh, that's a good guess. Uh, yes, so puppies, they have about 28 teeth. And normal dogs, they have uh, about 42 teeth. That's a that's a, a, a no, a, a, an average uh, number for uh, 
puppies and adult dogs. So puppies, they tend to have 28 and adult dogs, 42. But you were close, Koshi, you get the point. Uh, 40 plus, you know, for an adult dog, that's a good guess, very good. All right, so let's talk about what is the biggest mistake a dog owner makes. What is the biggest mistake a dog owner makes? What do you think is the biggest mistake you have made? What is it that you think that so far that you have, you have, you have, you had your dog? What is the biggest mistake that you have made? Can you type it in? Let me know what has been the biggest mistake that you have made so far with your dog. So the biggest mistake I think most dog owners make is they don't train their dogs. Beating her, oh wow, yes. Yeah, I know you didn't mean, uh, you didn't mean it, but yes, that, that's something that I usually don't suggest to do at all. You know, th those things, they, they don't work, they make your relationship really bad and they don't uh, have any effective, uh, uh, no positive results as well. Um, you know, being physical, getting physical with the dog or teaching them or train them using physical force, domination and things like that, it's really not a good idea. Uh, not only it's mentally not healthy for dogs and you as well, I don't think you enjoy that, uh, but also, uh, it doesn't have good result, positive result. It makes dogs uh, be afraid of you and makes dogs to be more sensitive uh, about you and your actions that you're taking. So, the biggest mistake, let's me, let me answer, the biggest mistake a dog owner makes is that they don't train their dog. That's the biggest mistake a dog owner makes. Uh, the reason for that is because most dog owners, um, they feel that dog training is a chore. I mean, we have to do this, we have to do that. It's too much for them. So what happens is they ignore training the dog. So the reason for that is because you have to actually physically and mentally be training your dog and teaching your dog. Uh, and you have to take a course and you have to do this, you have to do that. And, you know, it's just too much for dog owners. So they don't really uh, train their dogs. So that's the biggest mistake dog owners make. They don't train their dogs. So the, the, and one of the main reasons that dog owners, they don't train their dogs is, is because they feel, you know, I, I don't have the time, I don't have the energy to train my dog, I have to know what I'm supposed to do, I have to uh, understand what I'm supposed to do. It's very complicating, it's, uh, and, and you know, the, mar uh, the, the marketing, uh, dog training marketing itself hasn't done a great job to uh, let dog owners realize that how, uh, it, how easy dog training actually it is. So what I have done, I have a solution for you guys. I, what I have done, I have created an online dog training course that I'm going to leave the link in, uh, in, the, in the chat area. I want you to go ahead and check it out. It, this is a course that I have created using uh, play and praise reward system. So if you are familiar with me, uh, you know that I don't use treats, you know, force, dominations, um, using tools like shock collars, prong collars, uh, choke chin collars. I don't suggest using those. I suggest you to use play and praise. You know, when it comes to dog training, you have to understand that dog training is not a chore. You're doing it every day. Every day you're spending time and playing and praising your dog. So dog training is something that it happens every day, every moment that you're spending with your dog. So the course that I have created is 
simply teaches you how to use everyday activities that you're doing, every moment that you're spending with your dog to become a play and praise and training session. Training session is not a chore with the, with the dog. Training session with the dog is fun activity. It's actually you playing with your dog and you're praising your dog. And I'm sure you do that all the time. And the good thing is that I have created, I, I think it's showing it on the backwards and the others. I have created a, a deal for you guys. This is only available for the next 24 hours. Uh, all you have to do is go to the link that I provided. Yeah, it, it is backwards. Type in summer in, your, in the code that you're going to have to enter, and you're going to get 50% off regular price, which is $99, and you're going to get it for $49. So just type in summer. The word summer is the, the word that you, you uh, the, the password for uh, getting the deal. So, so remember, it's only available for the next 24 hours. And joining and start learning how to train your dog using play and praise reward system. I'm offering this deal only to those who are going to be watching this video for the next 24 hours, and then the deal is gone. Uh, I want you to get in, get started, and learn how training fun is, how fun training is. Training a dog is so much fun, and it gives you so much pleasure, and also it rewards you with so much that it's not, it, it's price, priceless. So what you're going to get in the course is something that it's in a way it's priceless i don't want you to ignore training your dog i want you to have this knowledge and uh, the power to start training your dog so you're not making the biggest mistake a dog owner makes most dog owners they ignore training their dog because they think that it's, it's, it's something that they don't have to do. Oh, the dog is going to learn on its own. No, the dog never learns on its own. You have to teach them. You have to take the time and train them and teach them how to live in human society, how to live with humans. You have to physically and mentally do it. So don't avoid, don't skip training your dog. Train your dog every day learn the basics. This is what you're going to learn in the course. You're going to learn the basics. Practice them every day with your dog. You know, uh, the course and the, the technique that I'm showing, you can use them every day. Any opportunity that you get, you can practice and train your dog throughout the day. And then you, you'll see in few months, you're going to, you're going to have a dog who's gonna be able to walk with you nicely on the leash. It's not gonna cause any headache for you. It's not gonna let make you uh, get stressed. It's not gonna make you, uh, uh, you know, drive you crazy because you, uh, your dog is barking or is growling or is not, is not behaving properly when you go anywhere. All these things, you know, can be avoided and can be in a way fixed if you just take the time to learn how to train your dog uh, properly without the use of treats, food, aversive tools like shock collars, prong collars, choke chain collars, using force, domination, or being alpha. You don't need to use any of these. These are the most common methods of dog training these days. You don't, I, 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 I'm really being honest with you, you don't really need those. It's 2018 and it's time to change the way we train dogs. It's time to, way, to change the way we look at dogs. Uh, and you know, it's something that you have to uh, understand that dog training 
has stayed the same for the past 100, 150 years. It hasn't changed much. They have all the methods of dog training have come and gone or are being repeated. Um, Caesar Milan came, you know, a few years ago, 10, 10, 15 years ago. Everybody started dominating their dogs where 1970 there was a domination uh, method as well introduced to uh, dog owners. They were using and then went back. Treat training was introduced, went away, came back again. Now it's very common to use treats to train dogs. And, you know, it just confuses dog owners. I understand that part, but it's, we don't need to use them at all. You don't need you to use any of those. It's time to use a proper form of natural form of dog training, which is play and praise. Let me explain what play and praise is. As a reward, you know, you want to give a reward to your dog when your dog is doing something. Let's say your dog is doing a, a wanted behavior and you want to reward your dog. You want to reward all the time, right? You want to reward your dog anyways, all the time. You're, uh, you're either saying good boy or good girl to your dog or you're saying, uh, or you're petting your dog or you're playing tug of war. These are rewards, right? So we use these rewards that are natural to reward the dog. Instead of rewarding the dog with treats and food, or you know, use this method and that method and this tool and that tool. tool. Instead, we use play and praise as a reward for the dogs. You know, your dog, in general, I always say, your dog will do anything for you for free. For free. They will do anything for you for free. They will do it. You ask them to sit, they will sit. But the problem starts when you start bringing treats to reward your dog. Bring food to reward your dog. Then your dog is saying, uh, it gets confused. It says, hmm, I was going to do it for free. Now you're asking me to do it for food. Uh, but I was going to do it for free. Now do I have to do what you're asking it, asking me, me to do for food? So do I have to expect food now instead of doing it for free? Because I was going to do it for free. Now you're bringing food and you're bringing better and better and better food. So. Am I now going to do things for you for better and better food? So you're stressing your dog, you're confusing your dog, you're making your dog to feel like it has to do things in order to get the food. It's really confusing. The fact is that your dog is willing to do anything for you for free. That's the reason why we bred dogs. We bred them many, many, many centuries ago, ago, started breeding them because we wanted them to work for us. We wanted them to do things for us, right, for free. We, we were not really thinking of, you know, if you do this for me, I'm going to give you food. Yes, the care part of it was there, but the main purpose of it wasn't to feed them treats or food if you do this. For example, the, the Doberman, who was uh, a man who was a jeweler, who bred this dog to have as a guard because wanted to protect this jewelry and money, uh, it didn't think of, you know, I'm going to breed this breed and breed this dog to protect me because, and then I give them treats for protection. No, uh, the relationship that they had was you do things for me, that's it. I give you food and shelter, yes, uh, as a care, but not as a reward. The dog, I guarantee you, your dog also will do anything for you. It wants to please you. Just being with you is a reward for them. You don't need to give them any more rewards but if you want to give them rewards you can give them things like I call it uh, a, 
five a dog's five essential needs. I've read written a book about it, which is you provide exercise, training, socialization, care, and then affection for your dog. These five become rewards for your dog. And you're providing these every day for your dog. On top of that, you're playing and praising your dog. So that makes your dog to be really, really happy, really, really loyal to you, and makes them just willing to melt for you for anything, right? So they will do anything for you. So just remember that food and treats are not the only things that dogs need as a reward. It's a bonus you can give them. I'm not saying don't give them treats. You can give them if you want as a just treat, but don't give them as a reward and don't depend on the treats as a reward. That's the problem. So first of all, training them is the best gift that you can give to your dog. Second of all, being, being present with your dog is also the best reward. So Koshi is asking a couple of questions. Let me just go through them. Wish to get some tips on identifying stress signs of a puppy and also some body language of dogs. All right, so let me answer that first. So the stress signs of a puppy is usually they're either going to be peeing or pooing in the house. Uh, they usually whine. Uh, the body language is usually uh, depends on what, what they are stressed about. It changes all the time, you know. Being cowering in the corner, that's a stress sign. You know, being, um, being uh, open, mind, open, like, you know, proudly sitting like that, that's not a sign of a stress. Uh, it's a sign of a dog who's nice and relaxed. So that's a relaxed sign, okay? Um, hold on, let me show you an example uh, of a stress dog. So this is a sign of a stress dog. I don't know if you can see it or not. That's a sign of stress dog. The mouth is open and it's panting, right? Uh, a dog who's jumping is a stress dog. The dog who is jumping and wants your attention is a stress dog. Okay. Um, again, open mouth is a stress sign. Okay. So open mouth and panting is kind of a stress sign unless it's hot or really they're thirsty or excited, exa uh, exhausted. Then that's a sign. If they're not running around and they're not hot and thirsty and then they're panting, that's a sign of stress. So those are the physical signs that you want to check. Um, but in general, if a puppy or a dog is peeing and pooping inside of the house and it's destroying things in the house, let's say it's chewing on things, chewing on the coffee table, chewing on stuff, that's a sign that your puppy or your dog is stressed. They, 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 unfortunately, they can't call you and say, hello, uh, can we have a chat? Something is bothering me. Uh, can we have a little talk? They can't do that. So what they do is they do things or they do some certain, so, some form of behaviors to have a talk with you, to let you know that they are stressed. So what you want to do is listen to them. When you see the signs of them chewing things, peeing, whining, and all that, those are signs that something is stressing them and you have to address them. So I have many videos I have talked about what can cause dogs to get stressed and how to deal with them. Basically, <clears throat> if you see your dog is giving you the signal, all you have to do is provide them the five daily essential needs. That's very important to focus on. I wrote a book about it. Exercise, training, socialization, care, and then affection. If any of these are missing or are given in a wrong order, 
it will also cause your dog to be stressed. If your dog, for example, Koshi, I know you're not providing, you know, you, unfortunately you can't uh, believe, provide enough socialization for your puppy, that will stress your puppy. You know, you have to allow your puppy to play with other dogs, uh, meet other dogs, play with them, hang out with them, learn from them, and if you can't provide that opportunity for a puppy, unfortunately that will stress your puppy. And Koshi has another question, is spaying, spaying a female. Do they remove the uterus? I'm afraid she is turning eight now and it, it's too late. You, your book says six months is the right uh, time. Um, yes. Uh, the, the problem with spaying and neutering is that we always, we are always learning new things about spaying and about dogs in general. But what, what we have learned about spaying and neutering is that it is better actually not to spay or neuter dogs at all, if possible. You don't want to actually remove any uh, uterus or any organs or any part of your dog's body because there is a reason why it's there. If it's not a cancer related, which is taking away life from your dog's life body, if there's an organ or a part in your body or in your cells, in your dog's body, there's a reason why it's there. And to remove it, it will cause stress in, your, in the body, in your dog's body. So it's better to keep it as is as long as you can. So in general, we used to think that you had to spay and neuter a dog when they, are tur when they turn six months old. But new studies have shown that you don't really need to spay and neuter them unless, unless, now I'll, I'll put my take on it too, uh, unless your dog is really stressing out of having those uh, hormones active in their body. So if you see that your puppy or your dog is humping a lot, is just too, think, you know, too overwhelmed with sexual things, <laughs> right? And, you know, it's too horny, <laughs> uh, male or female, and it's really bothering them mentally and emotionally and physically, it's bothering them then you may want to think about spaying or neutering them but the better thing would be not to spay and neuter them and if you have to you ha it's recommended to wait if you really have to spay and neuter them you have to wait when they're about three or five years old and then spay and neuter them if you have to the best solution for uh, spaying and neutering is training actually training helps your puppy or your, your dog to calm down. Um, it gives them mental and physical stimulation to relax them and calm them down. Most puppies or most dogs who are not spay or neutered, the reason they are getting stressed and get overwhelmed with that hormones is because they're mentally and physically not stimulated enough so they're focusing on things that they're it's not healthy and it's not uh, beneficial so you want to make sure that your dog is mentally and physically stimulated so you want to train them focus on training so speaking of training remember i have a sale on my uh, online course you get 50 percent off for the next 24 hours if you you want to join in uh, in the course all you have to do is enter the code summer in the uh, shopping cart and you will get 50 percent off the regular price which is 99 dollars and you get it for 49 dollars so you just have to enter the code summer in the uh, shopping cart speaking of training um also Koshi is asking, jumping and whining is a common scene when put back into crate after food and playtime. So the reason that happens, I'll give you a quick answer actually. The reason puppies whine uh, when you force them to go in the crate after play and uh, food, 
usually, you know, when they are when they are fed, they want to celebrate. So when they are fed, you know, you want to keep them out, uh, play a little bit, take them for a good walk, 15 minute, 20 minutes walk, then bring them back, put them in the crate, and maybe give the bone to work on in the crate. So that place becomes a good place. It's a place that they can calm down, and the bone also give, allows them to focus on and relax and get physical and mental stimulation. The more ideas you come up with providing physical and mental stimulation with your, for your dog, it's better. So jumping and whining, it will reduce as soon as you put them uh, in a crate if you provide them with something. You can put a bone, you can, put, uh, you can get one of those Kong toys and fill it up with uh, uh, peanut butter, a little bit of peanut butter and give them something that it calms them down. So Matthew is in the house and Matthew thank you for being here and you have a question. I'm picking up my 11 weeks old puppy, beagle puppy today. Wow, congrats. And I'm wondering if I can begin training, aside from potty training today. Also, would it be a good idea to take him for a walk on day one? Very, these are very good and solid questions. I really love these questions. Um, so for training, let me answer for training. Training should start in about, I would say, three to four weeks later. The first few weeks, any dog comes in, puppy or adult dog, if you're just adopting a dog. When they're coming to your home, they are very stressed. Their stress level is really high because they're unfamiliar with the situation and people and every the condition that is happening. So they're really stressed. Their, their stress level is really high. So it's not a good time to train them. That, that's not the state of mind that you want to start training them. State of mind, the training should be in the time, at the time that their stress level is lower. It usually takes a week, two, three, four weeks for a puppy or a dog to, to calm down, to relax. The first few weeks is introduction weeks when you're bringing a puppy or a dog. So what you want to do is keep them on leash, keep them under control, confined as much as you can. Uh, so your dog is not running around all over the house. That causes the puppy to, to get stressed too. So you want to confine them when you're bringing, you know, in the house, uh, you just uh, give them this area and then in the next two or three days, give them this, uh, this much space area and on and on. As the days go by, you expand the, that space more and more. That will also help your puppy to be re less stressed. So you don't want to give the whole house all of a sudden. That's the old uh, method of saying you can you bring your dog and you need to let the dog to sniff all over the house. Now, when you allow that, when you let a dog or a puppy to sniff the whole house, they get more stressed. They're saying, wow, this is a lot of place. <laughs> it's a lot of space. Oh man, I gotta take care of all this. I gotta look after all this. It stresses them. So you want to keep the space and the environment small. Keep them on leash. Keep them in a crate. Keep them in a expand area, con confined areas. Uh, walking is a good thing. Walking is actually very good, but because uh, your puppy is 11 weeks old, so. You know, you, you have to focus on providing four walks a day uh, for about 15 minutes at a time. So focus on providing four walks a day and uh, just uh, after four walks goes back in that confined area, controlled area. 24-7, uh, uh, keep an eye on your puppy for the next two or three days uh, at least. I know your work, you may be working on all that, but you want to pause on the work and just focus on your puppy. Your puppy needs you now the most because they have been separated from their uh, moms, puppy, you know, 
other puppies, brothers and sisters, other family that they've been, uh, they are a little bit stressed, so help them to uh, bond with you, get introduced to you, and get comfortable with the new environment, and uh, be, you know, feel a little bit more comfortable and uh, relax. So train them in a few weeks. Uh, don't rush. Uh, I know training uh, is something I al almost emph always emphasize, but training a new dog or a new puppy is actually is better to be done a few weeks later after you bring them to your home. Sarah Apollo is in the house. Thank you for being here. Um, and you have a question. Um, by the way, before I answer this question, let's play a game. Do you know if dogs can see in the dark? If you know the answer, type it in. Let's see if you know. Do you know if dogs can see in the dark? So if you know the answers, type in and uh, let's see if um, who's going to win this, uh, this game. So let me answer the question. Uh, Sarah is saying, um, hi dear, my dog is two years old and doesn't like uh, warding or treats. That's why it's very hard to train him. He doesn't eat dog's food and he barks at dogs. What can I do? <laughs> okay, so it looks like it's a three part question. So let me answer that. So it doesn't like rewarding or team treats. So this is exactly what I was talking about. Dogs want to do for you for free. They don't want to do it for a food or a reward as a reward. You know, in general, um, you don't want to uh, reward them with food. It's, it's, it's the opposite of what they are meant to, opposite of the, what they are programmed to. So it's a very normal if your dog is not liking to be rewarded by with treats. Don't worry, that's normal, that's how it's supposed to be. So a great example, most dogs, I would say 90% of the dog, and I'm just saying very confidently, 90% of the dogs are not food motivated. The other 10 are confused. <laughs> they don't know what to do. The 90% they know that I don't want to be rewarded with food. And you know, that's the problem. Uh, when you start rewarding them with food, they, you confuse them, you stress them. So don't worry about it, it's normal. Uh, all I want you to reward your dog with is play or praise. So what, you, what I mean by that is, if your dog is doing something good, say, good boy, good girl. What's your dog's name? Let's say it's Rover. Say, good boy, Rover. Good girl, Rover. Good girl, yes, that's the best reward. You can pet your rover, your dog, you can say, good boy, good girl, pet them, you know, play with them, you know, for five minutes, two minutes, three minutes, play with them. Let's say you're asking your dog to sit, and it sits, play a toggle board, throw the ball, throw the frisbee, uh, run around, play with your dog. Those are the best rewards. So you don't have to focus on rewarding your dog uh, with treats and he doesn't eat dog's food the reason your dog is not eating the dog food that you're providing is because most dog foods I'm betting I'm betting you're feeling kibble or dry food they don't feel good eating those kind of food if you force a dog to eat kibble or dry food they will start feeling bad they are not really excited to eat that food, but the only reason they're eating is because they're desperate, they're hungry, they're starving uh, to just eat. So they actually, so you're saying that he just likes chicken or salmon. Yes, they love real food. Dogs want to eat real food. Kibble or dry food is not a real food. It's processed, it's dry food, is has no nutritional value, they don't get any nutritional value out of it, they don't really get uh, satisfied out of it. If you give fresh food, real food, chicken, beef, things like that, salmon, 
they actually appreciate that. So give that food, those kinds of foods to your dog. And if you want, uh, I'm gonna actually share with you a link in the chat area that you can go ahead and watch that. Now, I want you to start feeding your dog. Start with this cooked diet if you want, and then hopefully eventually you can turn it into raw diet. But you can start with feeding this kind of food. I'm going to share that link with you. Uh, let me just put it on. There we go. There's the link. Just feed that. Um, there's the link. Watch those videos. Um, start learning about food and diet. And then uh, if you can eventually turn it into raw diet, it will be great. Actually, it would be perfect if... Um, uh, if if it's uh, uh, if it's possible, and uh, let me see. And the other thing was that he barks at dogs. So the reason your dog is barking at dogs, it could be that either it's excited to see them or it's uh, angry to see them. <laughs> it's either happy to see them or is not happy to see them. So. You have to find out what is the reason. Uh, do you know if he's happy to see them or is not happy to see them? Let me know in the chat. Uh, I'll have a better idea and better answer. But in general, if a dog is barking, it's saying to you that, let's say if I'm seeing dogs, dogs are stressing me out. So he's not happy to see dogs. Uh, so the reason he's not happy to see dogs is because he's lacking the social skills. So actually, I'm posting a video tomorrow on my channel uh, about socialization. So make sure that you are watching that video. I talk about how to help your dog to socialize with other dogs. Um, uh, G, okay, hold on. Okay, I'm getting lots of comments. I'll get all to all the, them all. Uh, if you, if you think that your dog is not happy to see them, there's a reason why. So it's lacking the social skills. So you want to improve your dog's social skills. So watch that video and learn how to socialize, help your dog to socialize and be more social and um, improve the social skills. Social skills for dogs is very important and you have to teach your dog how to gain that, those social skills. Um, it's important to understand also that normally and naturally dogs are social animals. They, they are social with humans and other dogs. And the reason they're not happy to see other dogs is because uh, something that you have done, some things that you have done has caused your dog to change its, uh, its thinking about social, uh, being social. So, you may be the reason that is causing your dog to be not happy to see dog, dogs, or that when your dog was a puppy between the ages of, uh, Matthew, pay attention to this, Ma uh, yes, Matthew, yes, Matthew, pay attention to this. Uh, so when your dog is puppy at the age of whatever age you're getting up to, but four months, there is a window of opportunity that you need to socialize your puppy. You need to let them be exposed to other dogs, other humans, other people, other things, other situations, all the um, conditions that is possible to socialize and learn to take in and be more comfortable in future with them. So during this few months that you have, you have to expose your dog to other dogs. And if you miss that window of opportunity, you will see the results of it later on when your dog is older. So you wanna make sure that your puppy, when you have especially a puppy, you're socializing your puppy a lot. Hope that answers your question. And um, 
So uh, those three questions, I think I answered it, uh, Sarah. If you have other questions or you have more, you know, if you need more explanation, let me know in the chat area and I'll answer them as well. Koshi is asking, do we keep puppies on leash even when they are playing fetch inside the apartment? That's a good question as well. Um, you can use a long leash or a rope. You can attach it to the dog. So in so you're you're kind of helping your dog to understand that when you get the ball, when you're playing fetch, when you go get the ball, you have to come back to me. So let's say you throw the ball and puppy goes and grabs the ball, but starts playing there and, and you say come and doesn't come, then you can use the leash gently to encourage them to come to you. So that's the reason you can attach the leash in the beginning to teach them the calm command. So when they are when they are asking them to come and they don't come, you can kind of encourage them to come to you. Once they they learn sit, stay, and calm, you can remove the leash or the rope and just ask them to come, and hopefully they will come. So for training purposes, yes, you want to keep uh, the dog on the leash. And the other, uh, somebody was asking me when we have dogs at home and we want them to play in the yard. Do we keep them on a leash? No. When they are playing, you want to off-leash them. Let them play off-leash uh, in a safe environment. If you think that your dog is safe in that environment and they can't escape or they can't get away or they can't be harmed in that environment, you can always have them off-leash as long as they are playing. Okay, Koshi, hopefully that answered your question. Matthew is saying, thank you so much. Very well explained. That's good. Very, that's great to hear. Sarah is saying, um, um, yes, they can. Matthew is saying, so this week I will be on vacation and will be able to spend all my time with him at home. But after this week, I'll be gone for eight hours a day you think that is enough to get him used to being alone unfortunately no um, but the good news is that you're off for a week and you can spend a lot of time with your puppy but after that you want to come up with a better plan eight hours to leave a puppy home alone is not a good idea it's not only mentally and physically not an idea in general it's not a good idea to leave dogs home alone, especially again, the, the first few months that they come to your home, to our home, and when they are puppy. Let me explain. By the way, you guys like my coffee cup? Yeah, I love it, right? Um, okay, then I will explain it. Let me answer the question, can dogs, see in the dark do they have uh, night vision yes they uh, the, the, the dogs have a special membrane in their eyes that, that allows them to see in the dark so they have a night vision so next time you're in the dark see and test, test your dog to see if they can go in places and not hit anything they are able to see in the dark. Very interesting. So let's, uh, let me ask you the next trivia question and let's see if you know the answers. How do dogs, where do dogs sweat from? When they're sweating, you know, we sweat from our head and uh, every, all body parts, most of our body skin, uh, it's, it's, we sweat and we release sweat. Where do dogs release sweat from their body? Let me know if you know the answer. Dogs sweat only through one part of their body. Can you guess which part that is? If you know the answer, type it in. Koshi is saying nose. Very good. Or feet. Very good, good, good guesses. Keep coming, keep, keep it coming if you know the answer. So let me explain, uh, answer Matthew's question. So when you bring a puppy home, there is a period, we call it fear cycle. 
free cycle is between the ages of around starts around six weeks to eight weeks old till four months old. Six weeks, eight weeks old till four months old. This period is called fear cycle. What that is, is a period that your puppy is very, very, very sensitive. So what that means is everything that they experience during this time is going to either freak them out or is going to make them feel comfortable about it. You know what I mean? So because they're sensitive, if you, for example, if you're walking and you accidentally step on their paw, right, and your dog, your puppy feels pain because you accidentally stepped on his paw and it feels pain, it's going to either memorize this experience for the rest of its life and it's going to react to it or it's going to say, hmm, I got pain from this human stepping on my paw, so I'm going to react to it from now on. So what happens is they either start fearing from you humans stepping on their paws and they react to it every time. Every time a human comes nearby, the dog is going to either run away or is going to bite or attack the human so it won't cause any pain in the puppy. So it's, it's, that's, that's the cycle, right? They're very sensitive. Because they are sensitive, you have to do everything properly at least within these few months, up to four months. So you don't want to leave them home alone as well for eight hours. Not even three hours, not even an hour actually. Because you don't want them to feel any kind of stress. When they are home alone, they feel stressed. They think that you abandoned them. They feel that they did something wrong. That's why you're not around. They feel that you, you're punishing them. They feel that they're home alone and they have to survive on their own. And there's all kinds of situations in this new environment. It takes them a long time to get comfortable with the new environment and new people. So you don't want to stress them out during at least the first few week, you know, few months, the four months. And even after that, you don't want to leave them home alone for eight hours. For puppies, I suggest you to come up with a plan, either have someone to look after your puppy or someone, you take your puppy somewhere and let them stay with humans, never alone. You don't want to leave them home alone. Um, again, at least the first few months, you don't want them to be staying home alone and experience stress and anxiety. When they're older, then you can teach them sit, stay, wait, and commands like that. Then can, they can start tolerating uh, being alone. alone better. At this age, at this time, when they are not trained, it's not a good idea to leave them home alone. So in next few weeks, I'm going to be posting how you can teach weight to your dogs and, uh, and make sure to watch that video. So Matthew, I hope that answers your questions. So make sure that you are aware of it and you're not leaving your puppy home alone for eight hours. Come up with a plan, uh, dog care, you know, ask somebody to come and look for your puppy or take your puppy to an environment or a place or home that there are humans that they can look after your puppy. Your puppy needs a lot of attention for the next few months. Um, So G dimensions, G dimensions, I believe I'm pronouncing your right. Thank you for being here. Uh, don't rely, re, don't totally agree that dry food has no nutritional value. Hmm. Okay, let me explain about this. So let me tell you that dry food, although the companies they say the food companies, they say that 
it has fresh this, fresh that, fresh everything is in there. At the end, because of overheating, it kills all the nutritional value that used to be in the fresh food that they were in the beginning preparing for the, the food. But because they can serve a food that has bacteria and mac microbes and things like that to the public, they have to kill all those bacteria and microbes. And when they do that, they also kill the, the nutrition that exists in that food. So at the, the end result is that there is no nutritional value whatsoever in that food. Everything, they might be, that company, they may be putting a good, lots of good stuff in that food. But the problem is that at the end, it loses all the nutritional value. Literally, there's no nutritional value. The food goes in and comes out of their, your dog's body. And literally, if you eat, if you feed your dog this much, they put this much. So basically, they put more than what they eat because the body is getting rid of toxins as well. So check your dog's meal next time, feed them this much and measure how much they're pooping you'll see that they poop more than what they eat, or almost the same amount as they eat. So the food goes in, comes out. The body doesn't take any nutritional value, doesn't benefit any from any of those nutritional value that is being fed. But if you feed raw diet and you feed them this much, they put this much. So what does that mean? That means that your dog is getting a lot of nutritional, nutritional value from that food that you're feeding to your dog and just has to waste a little bit of it. So that's the argument. And I have a whole bunch of videos that I talk about dry food and nutritional value and all that, which I'm gonna link those also in the chat area. You can go ahead and watch those and learn about um, this uh, argument that is there any nutritional value in the food dry food or kibble or not so there is the link i'm going to share with you go ahead and watch those video series and learn you know it's not that i'm, I'm going to argue about it but i'm 100 percent sure that there is no uh, nutritional value at all i see dogs here in our daycare every day and 90 90 of them are fed kibble or dry food <clears throat> and they are not healthy they're, they don't seem healthy because they're not getting any nutritional value. Their poops are always horrible. They're giant, they're stinky. They're always pooping. They're drinking tons of water because they're eating dry food and they're thirsty all the time. Their body is lacking moisture. So they're drinking tons of water to replace that uh, uh, water uh, or hydration in their body. It's just not a good diet at all. So definitely I don't agree to feed dogs kibble or dry food. Um, Matthew is saying, gee, the point is that it doesn't have nearly enough nutritional value and a lot of the vitamins in the food are destroyed during the processing. Exactly. That's exactly what I meant. The you know, most company, dog food companies, not most of them, but there are some food companies, some dog food companies that they mean well. I, I know some of them. I, uh, you know, I've been meeting them and I used to sell dog foods and I, I know them. They are good people. They mean well. They, they um, source their products from good places and everything is good, you know. The process of producing dry food, the last result, the last, um, the end word is the problem. The beginning of it is fine. <laughs> the end of it is the part that it causes a lot of health issues to develop in dogs and also uh, it destroys all the nutritional value because they have to heat it up. They're process, processing the food they heat up to the point that is dead. Everything is dead at the end. 
And Sarah is Sarah is saying, um, let me see. I get regarding when he was six months old was a rescue dog. So Sarah, your dog was a rescue dog when and you got him six months old. I rescued him also when he was six months old, and um, that brought memories. <laughs> uh, so you know it doesn't matter if your dog was a rescue dog or this and that, don't focus on them. What I want you to focus on is what is now and future of your dog, okay? So if you see that your dog has behavioral issue and is reactive and is not happy with dogs and is not happy with life, you have to help your dog to change his behavior and be happy, be social. So what you can do is you can start um, training your dog, training, is the best solution in general for everybody, every dog owner. Whatever problem you have, training can solve and help you to deal with that. Because training develops a communication system between you and your dog that you can communicate your wants and needs to your dog and help them to understand what they're supposed to do. It provides a, 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 an avenue for your dog to release is um, uh, pent up energy, it's, uh, it reduces the stress level in your dog, it gives your dog a mental and physical stimulation, uh, it brings the confidence level of a dog so they are able more to solve problems easily. So it's a lot of benefits and speaking of training, one more time, if you are willing to start to train your dog using play and praise reward system, I have a sale on my course. You can enter the code SUMMER in the shopping, um, shopping area and you get 50% off. It's only available for the next 24 hours and it's going to be gone and, and you're just paying $49 for the whole course and lifetime you can use it can get uh, all the benefits of um, that a dog um, your dog needs uh, so if you are willing go ahead I have the link uh, I'm going to share the link one more time in, in the chat area just click on it get into the shopping and go in there read everything that you need to know uh, sign up and when it asks for a um, for a quote just enter the word summer and you get 50 percent off um g dimensions say any uh, options out there for unprocessed food or can canned food of course there in this day and age there are so many options there are so many options to feed dogs other than kibble or canned food you can feed dehydrated food dehydrated food you know is not as good as uh, raw diet but uh, is not is not as bad as dry food dehydrated food is there dehydrated food you can go to your local pet store in this day and age now many of them are selling raw diet basically all you have to do even you can get it from your superstore your, not superstore your local store uh, where you go and shop do your shopping just buy meat chicken ground meat meat any meat that you you can afford uh, and just add some vegetables to it you know fresh green leafy vegetables preferably um, and that's that should be it it's not that hard and it's not that complicated you if you want to learn more details uh, like how to really get into raw diet and um, as i said i have all kinds of videos in my channel uh, i'm going to share um one more time you know go watch these videos we've talked about um, um raw diet how, uh, kibble and things like that uh, the benefits of raw diet and negative effects of uh, kibbles and um, dry food. We talked about all these and you get a lot of information there. 
Um, and, you know, just learn that there is better diet available nowadays other than kibble and dry food. Raw diet is the best diet, is more natural, more species appropriate diet for dogs. So you want to focus on that species appropriate diet. It's very important to understand that dogs or animals, they eat raw meat. So you got to feed them raw meat. They don't eat cooked food. They don't go and hunt uh, a prey and then make fire and cook it. They don't do that. They eat it right away, fresh, raw meat. That's what you want to feed your dog. Uh, Koshi was uh, answering the question to um, do, where do dogs sweat only from their one part of their body and he guessed nose and feet uh, and very close. And dogs, they sweat from their pads. So on the bottom of their feet, there's their pads. They sweat from there. Uh, I notice many times my own Harvey, for example, when we do uh, physical activity in summertime, especially to running around and playing. Uh, and we have a floor here that is black, uh, rubber mat floor. And he walks around and we can see his uh, sweat, sweat uh, on the floor. Um, sweat marks uh, on the floor it's very cute so he sweats <laughs> so um, that's where they release their uh, sweat from their pads uh, so let's go to the next trivia question um, do you know what breed of dog is snoopy and brian from family guy do you know their breeds snoopy and Brian from Family Guy. If you know the answers, type it in, in the chat area. And we'll continue. And Sarah is saying, my dog does not stay alone at all, and someone must stay with him, otherwise he barks and gets stressed. Yes. You know, naturally, dogs are social animals. They need you know, they, they've been bred to be social with humans. That means they want to be with humans. And if you take away the human from the dog, it's like unnatural, right? They, they need, they need the, the human to, to be social. Sorry. All right. They need human and they need that social interaction. You take away that human and the social interaction from your dog, your dog is going to get stressed. So I'm not saying all dogs uh, are like that. 99% of them are like that. There is 1% of dogs that they don't mind being home alone. They're, they are usually older dogs. They are usually dogs who are not very active, so they don't really mind being alone. But most dogs, they are social and active, and they like that interaction with humans. Even you being there and them just lying down by you is, is more, it's, it's enough for them. They need you to be there to help them to be relaxed and calm, right? Your existence, your presence in your dog's environment, it relaxes them automatically, automatically. So they need you to be there. <clears throat> Koshi is saying, at what age do we start giving calcium to dogs? I give only multi multivitamin syrup as supplement. So calcium, I was going to actually make a video about this too. The main three supplements that you should provide for your dog. So calcium is one of them. Calcium can be given actually through bones. You can just give raw bones and it will provide calcium. You can also um, do what I do. I buy a meat that has bone in. Uh, I, I get uh, ground meat, turkey, you know, chicken, beef, and any, anything like that, which has bone in grind. Uh, so it's grinded, but it's bone in. So I give that. So that provides calcium too. Calcium can be given at any time, especially when there are puppies, to, to build uh, healthier, stronger bones as well. 
Uh, calcium has other benefits as well, which reminded me again, I'm going to be making a video about this topic in, in soon. There are many videos coming up actually, and uh, make sure to watch those. But yes, so, uh, calcium can be supplemented by raw bone. Um, there is, there is, is there any other question? No, doesn't seem like there's any other question. I think I answered all the questions. So if you don't know the answer to Snoopy is a beagle, did you know Snoopy is a beagle? And Brian from Family Guy is a lab. <laughs> Very interesting. Uh, there's a, no, I think I got all the questions answered. And we've been on the air for 90 minutes, um, and this is good. I think we're doing good. If there is no other answer, I, uh, question, I can, um, let me see, there's one more question. Koshi is giving uh, meat with bone not grounded. It, is it okay to feed him enough of chicken fat? That, thanks all for spending time with us. It's 1 a.m. in, wow, it's 1 a.m. In, in, in India. Yes, sorry, yes. Thank you for being here and staying up. Let me get to bed. You have a great day. I will stay in touch. Yes. Uh, Yes, you can give chicken fat is, is fine. Uh, fat is really good for us and hum, humans and dogs. Uh, you can give, you know, uh, chicken fat is good. Natural fat is very good. Um, you can give bone uh, as, just give bone separately um, and it will be okay just to supplement um, calcium. All right, so if you have any other questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will uh, end the live stream now, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Make sure to, uh, if you are not subscribed to my channel, to go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell icon as well, so you will get notified as soon as I post my next video or if I go live. Uh, if you have any questions, leave those questions in the chat area or in the comments area as well, and I'll answer them uh, very soon. Um, make sure to watch the upcoming videos. I have two great videos coming up next week. Uh, hopefully you'll enjoy them. Um, and also um, make sure, again, uh, if you wanna join in my online course for dog training, to learn how to train your dog using play and praise reward system, uh, which is an everyday activity that you can have fun with your dog and enjoy. Make sure to go to the link that I provided in the chat line, I'll provide it one more time, um, and enter the, the code SUMMER in the, in the shopping cart when it uh, asks you and you will get 50% off. Uh, it's only available for the next 24 hours and it will be gone back to normal, regular price. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, Sarah is thanking also. Thank you for being here. Hopefully everything is going to go well with your dogs and you're going to enjoy your dog. And where, wherever you are in the world, uh, I appreciate you. And I thank you for being part of this community. And I hope you enjoyed this session today. And I will see you next time. And until next time, have fun with your dog.